What's going on everybody? Perry up here in the front per usual. Jen hiding in the back per usual. Uh, we went to go see Nightmare Alley, which is written and directed by no other than Guillermo del Toro. And this is a film that I was looking forward to, but I wasn't, I mean, to be honest, I wasn't really that excited for it. And it's only because I really haven't been that blown away by his work. Um, for a long time. I mean, I know a lot of people really like Shape of Water, but I thought it was a good movie. Um, I didn't think it was as great as um, what seems to be pretty much everybody saying it was. Um, but that's not really to rip on the movie. I did think it was pretty good overall. But I haven't seen a film since Pan's Labyrinth from him that I was like, wow. I was like, I am truly blown away by this film. So just to cut right to the chase, I actually think this film rocks. Um, I like this one quite a bit. I can see this being a divisive kind of movie. In a sense, not in the sense that I can see people saying that it's bad. I really don't think this is a movie that people are going to say is bad. But I can see a lot of people just saying, eh, it's alright. Uh, and you know, not, not really loving it. But I actually thought this film was, dare I say, kind of great. Um, there was a lot of things about it that I really enjoyed. And I understand that this is a... I don't know if I should call it, would you call this a remake or like a, like a reimagining? I've never seen the original, Perry has. So. I would say reimagining because okay. although it hits a lot of the same plot beats as the original, it's mm -hmm. very different in terms of like tone and I would say like uh, there are certain uh, uh, creative like differences between the two. In, in a way like stylistically, they're, uh, they're very two different films. And this is like almost, you said like, this is almost a whole hour longer than the, than the original? The original is only an hour and 50 minutes. Okay. This one is two and a half hours, so it's 40 minutes longer. Interesting. Um, I guess we'll dive more into that later, but um, yeah, I I actually really enjoyed this film. And I know it's going to be a hot take, but I think this, at least from what I've seen from him, I think this is his best film since Pan's Labyrinth. Um I don't want to oversell it with that because even though I do think this film is great, like I still wasn't really blown away by it, but I do think that there are a lot, a lot of things in this film that I thought were very effective. And I think what was refreshing for me is that this film was a lot more grounded than, than, than what I expected because, um, everybody knows that Del Toro really likes his fantasy angle. Um, he's somebody that really likes to go a bit over the top and likes to be fantastical with his films. Even, I mean, Pain's Labyrinth is a, is a, even though that film's a masterpiece, that's obvious, that's a clear example. You have Hellboy, of Shape of Water. I mean, this guy really likes to, likes to dive into that kind of genre in filmmaking. And with this film, I thought it was going to go down, down that same road, but it really doesn't. This film is probably the most grounded film that I've seen from him. And um, I think that's what I liked a lot about it uh, because it kind of uses that groundedness in a way to explore its themes um, that have to do with um, hope versus false hope and how, uh, you know, toying with people's emotions and um, pasts can be really dangerous, especially when it's not with the best intentions and it's for the motivation of greed. And I just... I thought the way that this film explored its themes through its characters and story um, was really well done and really well fleshed out. And um, the acting is honestly pretty damn incredible. Uh, Bradley Cooper, I was a little bit concerned because I'm not the biggest Bradley Cooper fan, even though I don't even dislike him. I think there's some films where he's really great in. Um, but in this film, I think he's pretty good. Uh, there's he's not the best performance in the movie but I think he does more than enough to really sell this character and Willem Dafoe uh, that guy is amazing I mean he's only in this film for basically the first act but he is I mean I've never seen him play a character that I didn't fully believe um, he, he's so good at embodying these characters and it's just the same with this film uh, Richard Jenkins that guy is such an amazing actor um, might be the best performance in the film, even though, again, he's not really in it much. But he really sells his emotion, really sells his character, and I thought he was great. Um, but yeah, I do... I Again, I, this film did surpass my expectations. 
Um, but again, I don't want to oversell it because I do think it's great, but it didn't necessarily blow me away in a way that I have seen Del Toro do before. But anyway, I'll dive more into it later. I've talked enough. Go ahead, Perry. What'd you think about the film? Okay. Well, y'all just heard good cop. It's time <laughs> to hear bad cop. Uh, I might get a lot of shit for this. And I actually watched the original Nightmare Alley in preparation for this film. Uh, great film, by the way. If you haven't seen it, please check it out. And it's got a Criterion release, so there's that, too. Um, <laughs> but yeah, I didn't really connect with this film. I, 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 here's the thing. I really admire it from a production perspective of like from a production point of view the production design immaculate the cinematography great the direction it's Guillermo del Toro of course it's very good um but I think a lot what killed the film for me was the acting and I will say I didn't care for the pacing all that much uh, because one thing I wanted to avoid is I didn't want to watch this film under the lens like, oh, I'm just going to compare it to the original the entire time, you know? Because I think that would be very unfair. Uh, like, of course, like, in the back of my head, I noticed the differences between the original and the remake uh, and, you know, why I vastly prefer the original over this one. But I wanted to view it, like, as its own animal because it's obviously a very different vision. Uh, like Carlos said, Guillermo del Toro is coming from the more fantastical point of view. Mm -hmm. The original Nightmare Alley, it's, uh, it's mor morality-wise, it's very murky and um, it's drowning in, like, cynicism. Like, it has such a, a different tone. Uh, to this film and it, it, and it has a vastly different look like I said the acting is what I struggled with and the reason that's a big reason why I didn't connect with this film hmm. uh, me personally I, I'm not saying all the performances are bad uh, uh, I'm just saying some of the performances uh, like Bradley Cooper he was a flat line for me I've always struggled with him as an actor because I feel like he's one of those Hollywood actors who either a plays it too safe or or B, keeps on getting casted because he has the leading man look that Hollywood likes. Um, because uh, in a lot, like pretty much the entire film, I'm sorry, but it just felt like Bradley Cooper was reading off lines to me. I really didn't get much from a performance. He was a flat line and I don't think he had really any chemistry with Rooney Mara. And I think to me that's the weakest aspect of the film is I never bought that relationship. I never bought it for a second. I was not uh, I was not jiving with it. I mean, I, I wasn't I, invested in it. And I feel like the acting is uh, like the big reason why I couldn't get invested in the story. Also, the way like exposition was delivered, um, you got to think like. The original Nightmare Alley, and I'm trying to not compare it to the original, <laughs> but I feel like the way the like the story unfolds and the characters uh, uh, learn certain things, like it has such a like snappy like flow to it, like boom, 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 like you don't need to say too much, and we understand what you're saying. This film, I feel like it'll go on for like 10, 15 minutes to explain certain things that I feel like. I, me as an audience member I've already gotten but they go out of their way to explain things for too long and I, see that. And I feel like Bradley Cooper like a big thing is he had to warm up to the Carney people um, he doesn't really do much and they kind of just you know uh, they're too trusting way too quickly and it, it, it I, I didn't vibe with it hmm. uh, because obviously they're like a lot of uh tricks and a lot of thought that goes into their scheming mm -hmm. and it feels unnatural where it's like we're already at the point where uh this character's discovering this thing about this act it's like we're we're getting there a little too quickly but yet the film is two and a half hours long but it jumped to that so quickly you know hmm. I, didn't, I didn't really feel that to be honest with you but i don't think it's an invalid point it's just like when i was watching it things didn't really feel like they were moving too fast because i was gonna say like no but that's what's moving too fast that's the thing is how like jarring the pacing was to me because certain things were revealed uh 
you know, I feel like uh, too quickly. But then at certain points, as information's being revealed, you'll have like a 10 uh, minute scene um, where it's like, you you could have just, you could have explained this in like two minutes. Like it did, did not, it did not, they did not need to go in as much detail as if the audience wasn't getting it, you know? I feel like the film, the writing, uh, I feel like uh, it should have trusted the audience more. And I feel like the film didn't know when to shut up. It's like, I got it, and then they keep fucking explaining things that I've already, like, latched on to. I mean, I can understand that point of view, but I think there's only, like... Like, it didn't feel like it was that... Like, like it didn't feel that superfluous to me. Like, there was... Yeah, like, there was probably moments um, where they were kind of, you know, really going out of its way to make sure the audience understands, but um, it didn't really seem that that abundant uh to me it felt kind of sparse when, when those moments happened and um i didn't really linger on it too much um well keep in mind like i try to put my my, my head in the perspective of a person who's not familiar with the original nightmare alley who's never read the book or anything mm -hmm. and even still it's like wow like you you could have said this in like two or three lines and yet you're going way too far with this one hmm and what did you think of the relationship between Bradley Cooper and Rooney Mara? I thought they had no chemistry, and both their performances were pretty much flat lines for me. Yeah, they got see, nothing from them. See, I'm not, I'm not in the same camp. Like, I, I don't think they had like the best on-screen chemistry I've ever seen, but it was doable for the movie. I didn't like, buy it for a second. Like, I thought it was the way it was built up was was well done. I mean, I honestly don't have a problem with it. Um, could they have maybe flushed it out more? sure but like i'm not in the camp that's like oh like they they, they were just flat lines I, I just don't feel that way i feel like there was moments where bradley cooper was on the cusp of giving me uh uh you know a, a good performance uh but he never reached that i never really got anything out of her performance like i said it felt like an actor just reading off lines because i feel like in a lot of his performance he puts on some type of drawl and then he just reads off his line and that's literally it to his performance i don't i don't get like any depth from his character yeah again like i'm not i'm not i'm not that like dramatic about it like i, I didn't feel it was that dramatic like i felt like yeah like could could he have casted an actor that would have given more to this role sure but i still think bradley cooper did a good enough job to make his character work and for me to believe it um and maybe it's not just because of his acting but the direction i thought was well done because like for almost like a whole like i don't know how long it went but the first like 10 or 15 minutes he doesn't even say a word uh, see i like that i like that yeah. but once it's once he gets into delivering his lines and you start to learn more about his character it's like oh that's that's when like the like his performance started to sink but like the first 15 minutes i thought it was a great idea to have him not say any dialogue yeah. but of course the second he delivers lines flatline i'm pretty much not getting anything i mean maybe that's again i think that like I think the creative choice of not having him really say anything for like the first 10 minutes really help soothe me into his into his performance because like it adds a layer of mystique to his character and then like you're actually dying to hear you know uh, you know how he talks and how he embodies his character and again like um, I think it works well enough for the film just like in my personal opinion I think he's pretty good in the movie mm. um, I mean again I do agree that he didn't need to be casted for this role and i do agree with you perry that um i think he's casted just because for his his star power and just because he has that face that uh hollywood loves right um and i think what i'm oh, i'm sorry before i before i let you go there's one thing i do want to touch on and it does have to do with a similar fact and that's why i want to talk about it really quick is that this film and this is one thing that i was worried about when i was when i saw the trailer but like Lately, with Del Toro's films, and it's not even lately, just honestly, with all of his films, he has this very Hollywood style to filmmaking uh, in terms of his uh, presentation. And I was worried that it was going to come off too Hollywood. And I do think that that is a problem with the movie, is that it kind of reaches and has this over-the-top uh, value to it. 
whether it's with the score, because the score of this film at times where it's like really dramatic, uh, you have this big like orchestra score come in and try to like really let the audience know that this is a dramatic moment when we really don't need it. Um, and also like the look of this movie when I watch the trailer, I'm like, you know, it looks great like in terms of like like you know aesthetically and technically like the colors are vibrant it looks good but it just I'm not saying the whole movie is like this but it doesn't seem like very natural looking like it comes off a bit artificial to where even though everything looks good it just you can't it just you can't help but think that this is a set piece and well, it's because of how it looks well it's also you got to think this is shot digitally and it's kind of jarring when it's like his production design like Guillermo del Toro doesn't like to like just CGI like backgrounds you know he likes yeah. to have he's a craftsman he wants to build everything from the ground up and that's why like a lot of studios don't want to work with him because this movie costs so much to design those elaborate uh, yeah. you know uh, a you know th those elaborate uh, production designs yeah. um but it's just jarring to see these elaborate production design that are built from the ground up meanwhile you have a filmmaker who's shooting digitally yeah it's like if you shot on film it would complement the you know the the real life production that you you're built for your film that you makes know? a lot of sense and i think perhaps the lighting has has a lot to do with it too um it's just weird like I actually do at moments love the look of this movie because of the way that the carnival bulbs to yeah me, that's what stuck out with the lighting i thought that was really great how they actually use like bulbs that felt like it was from that time period that's yeah. the thing is like in, in terms of production in terms of costuming in um um like i said in terms of the production design it all feels like it's from the late 30s early 40s yeah and it's just it's just unfortunate that for me when i'm watching it and i know that like you know i know that most viewers like watching a movie this is not like what they would think of when they're watching it they don't care but like when i'm watching it like i just can't help but like this to feel that this looks too polished like everything looks so clean and shiny and it's like you know for a film like this i i need more of like a rustic natural feel and it goes back to the same point where it kind of has that hollywood look that um i just really wasn't too fond of in this movie and even though again i i still think that this movie is great like i'm going as far to say that it is great i personally enjoyed it that much but i'd be lying if i didn't tell you that that hollywood style um did annoy me and it was apparent when i'm watching it you know not only with how it looks but um you know also with the way the score comes in in certain moments and um i understand that this is the way he likes to make movies because that's pretty much apparent in like all of his movies that and it was kind of a callback to like a older uh style of like uh filmmaking i guess i mean i get yeah i mean i guess you could say that but i just it's just like it just seems like classic it just seems like what this filmmaker is doing now i mean right del toro he's like he's falling all movies, in that slump where it's like he's just doing you know the 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 same thing like he's not uh it's like because we've seen his bag of tricks way too many times you know yeah i mean it's a it's a style and it's tough it's tough because like filmmakers they establish a style right and right we like them for that but then like maybe sometimes it does hit a point where you maybe want to see them maybe tackle something a bit differently right the, you want to see them like push themselves as artists yeah. as opposed to just play it safe and you know a lot of people have that same complaints about wes anderson yeah. and i think though it even though I really, I like all of Wes Anderson's films, like, I can see that uh, being a valid criticism of him, just like I can see that being a valid criticism of Guillermo del Toro. Um, I will say I'm knocked on the performances too much. I'm, well, in terms of Bradley Cooper and Rooney Mara, I stand by what I said about their performances. <laughs> uh, but I will say Willem Dafoe is great, but he's not in the film a lot. He's only in the know? first act. Basically. Yeah, he's only in the first act. Yeah. And Richard Jenkins, also great, but he's only not... Only in the third act. Only in the third yeah. act. So it's like that that second act where it's like, please, <laughs> please, please. I just want a great actor to come in and, like, Kate Blanchett, uh, she's pretty good in the film. Um, but, it's the again, I just did not feel the chemistry between her and Bradley Cooper. It's, it's like Kate Blanchett acting Bradley Cooper under the table, you yeah. know? Yeah, and it's... um. For me, again, like, for me, it's not really the chemistry that I felt or anything. Like, I didn't have a problem with that. But with Kate Blanchett's character, like, even though she did a great job, I think it's just, like, the direction of where they went with this character, with, with her character. Because they wanted to be, like, this, you know, seductive, almost femme fatale kind of character. 
that is maybe a little bit over the top at times. Maybe comes off a little bit cartoony, you know? Yeah. That and their scenes run way too long. There I can was, see that. There was one scene uh, between Kate Blanchett and Bradley Cooper that felt like it just went on way too long. Oh, but one thing that... And I think the reason why I do really like this movie a lot, and I know that a lot of people are probably going to not agree with me, but even though this film is two hours and a half long, I felt very engaged throughout its runtime. Like, there might have been, like, a tiny stretch in the second act where I'm just like, I'm not super interested, but for the vast majority of this film, like, I actually was impressed with the pacing. I was impressed with how engaged I was, and I did like where the story went, and uh, I liked how it, I liked where it ends, um, even though it's... I don't know, it's... I actually, I like the ending. I can see people not liking it because they can say, oh, I saw that coming for a mile That's away. one part I agree with you because yeah. I actually think the ending of this film mm -hmm. is superior to the original uh, ending. Even though I pr much prefer the original mm -hmm. over this one, I do think the ending to this one is vastly superior. Okay. Um, so that is one part I am in agreement with you on. Uh, that and Richard Jenkins and Willem Dafoe both being great. Um, we also agree on the direction and the camera work yeah, really good the production I mean, yeah, yeah. Th that's the thing it's like it's a very glossy looking film but that's the thing is like this obsession with aesthetic is only gonna take me so far you know if i'm not feeling the depth behind these characters and not truly invested in the story and you were talking about how it's a two and a half hour film it's like the things they add to lengthen this film i really don't feel like it was absolutely uh, that necessary. See, that, I think that's where we like disagree a little bit because I don't think I, it really added that much to the movie, though, or the story for that matter. Well, what I'm gonna say is like I actually, I actually felt like depth in this movie. Like it just didn't feel like a surface level movie. Like I, with the characters and with the themes, I thought all that was fleshed out really well. I think there was a lot of substance here, and I think that's why like. I thought it was really good because I was really hooked to the story. I liked the characters and the performances were great and I thought there was a lot of depth there and I think that's why again like the themes of this movie I really enjoyed. Um, it has a lot to do with you know again the dangers of uh, faith and um, and again like the the uh, difference between you know true hope and false hope and mm. how um, giving people false hope with the you know with bad intentions is a recipe for disaster not only is it immoral but you know it's one of those things where you're kind of playing with fire and if you don't respect people's emotions um you're gonna go down a really dangerous hole and i liked the way this film explored that i think that's why like i think this film is pretty damn good yeah well i mean i like it conceptually it's just it boils down to again the, the execution. execution the yeah. acting and the pacing i mean overall like there are things i really do admire about this film but it really left me cold that's what it boils <laughs> There's down a very to. classic it left yeah. me cold <laughs> it left me cold i'm sorry it it did um, i mean that's fair enough i mean it's one of those things where like it's on it's kind of hard to really like it's kind of hard to say like express to you why it really did work it's just for me the way it was done worked and for you again like i think for you it comes down to the fact that you weren't really sold on the acting for the main character and you weren't really a fan of the writing either yeah my, and my again rooney, rooney mara yeah uh, th that's the thing is like uh i'm not like the act i'm not like the writing was terrible it's just like i could see the script being trimmed up and i could i could see the the writing i could see the script just becoming tighter you know that's yeah. what it need it needed tightening uh, yeah. because i could see what they were going for conceptually i could see what they were reaching for um but it, it just didn't like there was no pathos behind uh the film for me which is why i said it left me cold maybe it's just because like I mean, I think the film stands well on its own and everything, but, like, it was really nice. It, w it was really refreshing for me to see a film from Del Toro that felt a lot more subtle, a lot more grounded, um, you know, for the most part, not reaching too far to really impress people. Um, because, again, this I would describe this film as a slow burn. Uh, this film moves pretty slowly, but it's, it's engaging, and for me, it's because it's of how grounded it is and how it deals with, like, real actual themes regarding life and i just thought it was really well done yeah. see i would have felt that more if like you said he didn't go so hollywood with it you yeah know, especially that, in terms of casting 
Yeah, that's fair enough. Uh, and I think, again, like, in terms of the presentation, it is too Hollywood for me. But, and some of you are like, well, what's that supposed to mean, Hollywood? That's so vague. It's like, you've seen a big Hollywood movie, you know, like, what they go for in terms of production. Yeah, I mean, just the way, I mean, not not only with the set design, but just the way, like, the camera moves, the way it's... The, the way the music is used to the, to the, uh, throughout the movie. Um, it's funny you mentioned the score because I completely forgot the score. Like, it was yeah. in, in in my one ear, out the other. Like, so forgettable, so stunned. I mean, like, for the most part, the score isn't bad. It's just the way that the way that it's incorporated into the movie, again, in, in these dramatic moments, I just thought, oh, like... And then that's why I say it's Hollywood, because most Hollywood movies, they... They tell they, you how to feel. They, they try you, to manipulate you with the score. And they always present the film to be a lot grander and bigger than what it actually yeah, is. Yeah, exactly. But that's the thing, is like, you don't... That's jarring, and you don't need that for a story like Nightmare Alley, when it's supposed to be character-based, yeah, you know? Even though it is an ensemble movie, at the heart of the film, at the heart of the story, yeah. it is a character study. Yeah. It really is, and again, like it's this is this film is huge on character themes and yeah. themes in general, and like that's and it, yeah, the story is great and everything, but to me, it's like the characters and the themes is really what this film's strong suit is, and for me, that's what really kept me engaged. Um, See, I mean, that's yeah. where I'm in the opposite. I think the production is where. Uh... Uh, obviously, we've t complained about it being too Hollywood, but I mean in terms of, like, production design and, uh, you know, direction and cinematography. Even the direction's I really good, too, don't get me wrong. Like, yeah. I agree, I agree with you, Perry. The direction, obviously, without, the, without his direction, this movie um, wouldn't have been nearly as good. Uh, but I do like the way that the themes are fleshed out in this mm -hmm. movie. Like, that's what I'm saying. Like, that's what really makes me go from saying, oh, this movie's fine or good, to saying, you know what, I think it's actually kind of great. It's because of that. Mm hmm but yeah um anything more to say about it no I, I think we this was a really good discussion piece yeah this is, yeah for sure we went I, we went along a lot longer than yeah. i expected I, I sincerely apologize to jen in the back jen in the back oh, suffering back there yeah. <laughs> listen to us uh geek out over uh, nightmare alley <laughs> um not geek out no pun intended <laughs> <laughs> see what i did yeah. there <laughs> But, all right, then, if we're done, we'll go ahead and give ratings. Um, again, I was surprised by this movie. I mean, I was I was surprised by it. I'm going to I'm gonna give this movie a... I can't believe I'm doing this. I really didn't expect it. I'm going to give it a soft 8 out of 10. Wow. I really... Again, I wouldn't call a movie... A, I wouldn't really call a movie great unless I give it an 8. Like, I, th I think this movie... It's not, like, insanely great, but it barely makes the cut for me to say, you know what, it's, it's a great movie. It's a great movie. So I, I'll give it a soft 8 out of 10. Like I said, y'all, y'all heard good cop. Time to think you're a bad cop. Uh, I'm going to give this one, and we are very split on this one. I'm giving this a, should I go soft or mid? Soft or mid? <laughs> I'll go mid. Uh, mid five out of ten. Yeah, you're going to go with a five, bro. <laughs> uh, I'm sorry. I, I think overall it's, it's, uh, uh, it's impressive in a lot of, um, uh, in a lot of uh, different ways uh as we've stated before but it just did not connect with me i actually think it's pretty kind of me mediocre <laughs> kind of mediocre i'm sorry but it's not gonna stick with me i like this movie a lot i mean i do agree like i i don't really see myself re-watching this movie that often that's one thing i will say about it um but i would buy this movie um not at full price but i'd probably buy it like if it was like Fourteen ninety nine, maybe at nineteen ninety nine. If I'm feeling froggy and I got a lot of money or something, that's a whole criterion right there. Let's not get crazy. <laughs> I would uh, buy the uh, nineteen forty seven uh, Nightmare on Alley oh, okay. on Criterion. Well, after seeing this, I want to watch the original to see how it compares. It you know, ooh, Tyrone Bowers, oh, or Powers, excuse me, the main actor in the original blows Bradley Cooper out really? of the water not even close i don't i don't doubt it i don't doubt that for a second <laughs> but you shouldn't doubt it i just said it <laughs> <laughs> if it comes from perry why the fuck would you doubt it yeah <laughs> um but guys uh this is not the only remake we are reviewing this week uh, yeah uh tomorrow uh we are going to see and review uh 
the West Side Story remake directed by everyone's favorite director, Steven Smaltzberg. I'm Smaltzberg. Just kidding. <laughs> I'm just kidding. Steven Spielberg. Um, Schmaltzy. Yeah. <laughs> do your sign off. I don't want to steal that from you. Yeah, we're gonna we're gonna we're gonna review West Side Story tomorrow. So if that's something that you're interested in, please show up for that video. I'm not really excited for it. Like I don't have very high expectations for it. I don't want to see the movie at all, but since it's getting such rave reviews, you know, I might as well watch it. Uh, I'm excited. Musicals are not really my thing. They're really hard for me to get into, and just it's not a movie that I would I was planning to see at all. But we'll see. We'll see how it shakes out. Gosh. Watch it be the inverse. He's really he's he's pretty high on Nightmare Alley, and I'm I'm a very it left me cold. Watch it be the complete <laughs> opposite on West Side Story. I'm singing West Side Story's praises while Carlos is like, ugh, it's just mediocre. <laughs> it's, it's mediocre as fuck, man. I'm going to come out and be like, the West Side Story just left me cold. <laughs> <laughs> I'm moving to the East Side. <laughs> <laughs> well, all right, guys. That's what we got to say about Nightmare Alley. If you really enjoyed what we had to say about the film, please give this video that thumbs up and share it amongst your friends and don't forget to subscribe to the channel to be updated on more film related content peace